What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Julia, and in today's video, we are gonna be comparing my Apple Watch and my Garmin Venu 2S. I just got this for Christmas, and since I've been posting all my stories, you guys have been asking tons of questions. So today, we're getting into all the similarities, all the differences, and why I personally prefer one over the other. So without further ado, make sure you're subscribed and let's get into it. So I actually put together a list of some similarities and some differences between the two watches. I wanna preface by saying I was an Apple Watch girly for about seven years. I got my first Apple Watch going into my freshman year of college and then I upgraded and got this newer one my senior year of college. So I was a lifelong Apple Watch girl. Okay, I loved this but it was time to upgrade. It was just time to switch it up and I am so freaking glad I did. But we're gonna quickly go through the similarities between the two watches because there are a lot of similarities. Basically, both the Apple Watch and the Garmin Watch have an app you can get on your phone that you can see all of your data, all of your metrics, you can connect with other people and see their activity. You can do that whether you have an Apple Watch, obviously you'll just be connecting with Apple Watch people, or whether you have a Garmin, you'll obviously just be connecting and sharing with Garmin people. But on that app, you have all of your data, all of your workouts, pretty much any type of information the watch collects from you is on that app. However, the apps have different metrics, different information, which I'll get into later. Another similarity is that there are tons of workouts to choose from, whether you're using the Apple Watch or the Garmin, like the list goes on and on. There are activities and workouts like I would never think to even record that are available on both Apple and Garmin. And then another thing are the badges and awards. On Garmin, they have what are called badges, basically just little achievements, awards, check marks, things like that. And they have the exact same thing on the Apple Watch. You see it in the app. You get little awards for doing different monthly challenges or like your first run, stuff like that. There's little awards, little stepping stones that you can earn whether you have the Apple or the Garmin watch. Simply put, when it comes to the similarities, there's nothing that my Garmin watch can't do that the Apple watch can. Like everything this can do, this can do as well, plus more. And I also feel like I should have mentioned that I have the Apple watch series four, and it is the 40 millimeter version. And then this is the Garmin Venu 2S, which is also 40 millimeters. Obviously it is just a circle watch face instead of the rectangle. But now let's get into the differences. So probably the biggest difference and the main reason why I wanted to switch from Apple to Garmin was for the battery life. I'm the type of girl that I don't really use my watch for much besides looking at the time and recording my workouts. Like I always have all of my notifications turned off. Like I don't like when my watch is just like buzzing constantly so I turn every single notification off but despite that this Apple watch died before the end of the day way too often it didn't really die before the end of the day on like a rest day or an active recovery day but any day where I was getting two maybe even three workouts in workouts meaning like a lift and a walk or on the rare days where I would do a lift a walk and a swim it would die before dinner time which I just didn't really appreciate and I know I have a very active lifestyle that's still not cool, you know? And I heard about the Garmin's having the seven to 10 day battery life. And my boyfriend has a Garmin and his lasts forever. And I'm gonna be honest, I was a little bit skeptical because I'm so active, I'm always moving. Like, I was like, there's no way it's gonna last seven to 10 days with me. But I was so incredibly wrong. I can attest to this. I just charged this for the second time ever last night, 10 days after getting the watch. So I obviously got the watch on Christmas, plugged it in, charged it up that day, put it on that night to sleep, and it lasted 10 full days. 10 full days of me working out, doing my normal activity without dying. And honestly, it probably could have gone another day. I plugged it in last night and it was at 9% but that day it had only died 4% the entire day, getting a walk in and a lift. Like the battery life is just incredible. And like, that is the main thing that sold me. But now that I have the watch and I've learned it and I know how to use it, like I'm just so obsessed with every single feature, but the battery life is just something I seriously appreciate so freaking much. And if you're in the market for a new watch with a better battery, I highly, highly recommend like, I'm truly mind blown. 
And I feel like I need to mention that I physically never took this off from when I first put it on my body to when I took it off last night to charge it for like the first official time. Like I shower in it, I sleep in it, like it never comes off. It's always working, always getting my heart rate and the battery still lasts that long. Like it's, it's incredible, truly incredible. So the next big difference would be the calories burned. I personally don't look at calories or even care about calories burned, but I know a lot of people do, so I wanted to mention this. When it comes to me personally, my Apple Watch always shows a way higher calorie burn, whether it's by the end of the day or per workout than my Garmin does. And no, I never put both watches on for a workout to get like a true comparison, but I did look back at a ton of data from workouts on my Apple Watch and a ton of data from workouts on the Garmin and kind of compare to those similar workouts to see and the Apple Watch always had a way higher calorie burn. I'll actually put a picture on the screen comparing a two mile incline walk wearing my Apple Watch versus a two mile incline walk wearing the Garmin. I did these on consecutive days. One walk was on a Sunday, one walk was on a Monday. I used the same exact treadmill, 10% incline, 3.3 speed, and went for two miles. And the calorie burn was extremely different. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Once again, I don't really look at calories, pay attention to them, but I do think that the Garmin calorie calories burned, at least for me, is probably way more accurate than the Apple Watch calories burned simply because my Garmin watch has no problem getting my heart rate, whereas my Apple Watch struggled getting my heart rate. Like it could never find it, especially if it was slightly cold out or if my skin was slightly cold. Like it never found my heart rate. And if it did find my heart rate, it would stay for like five seconds and then it would lose it again. So that was very aggravating, especially because I like looking at my heart rate. Like it's a great way to kind of judge your exertion. I'd rather see my heart rate than my calories. So that was a big difference for me. And I really appreciate how this watch can literally always find my heart rate. I love it. The next big difference would be the goals. So if you're familiar with the Apple watches, you know they have those famous three rings. There's the move ring, the stand ring, and the exercise ring. When I first got my Apple watch, you couldn't adjust the exercise ring or the stand ring. You could only change your move goal, which were the number of active calories burned. I think you can now change move and exercise. Maybe you can change stand too. I'm not really sure. I just know the stand goal, AKA like getting up and walking every hour was always set at 12 hours. The exercise goal I think started at 30 minutes a day and I don't remember what my move goal started at, but I obviously adjusted that and changed my goal depending on what my goals were. But those are the three goals on the Apple Watch and if you achieve them, you obviously fill those rings. Now, when it comes to the Garmin, I personally just have like a normal watch face on my watch, like it looks like a watch but there are goals. I can see them on my app and you can either set them yourself or you can have the watch learn you and set them itself and kind of adjust them as the watch learns more about you, as your activity increases or if it decreases, like it modifies and changes them as it learns you and as you go through the year. So I personally chose for the watch to learn me and set my goals. So it's really cool to see it kind of change day to day and when I got this watch, I was at my parents' house. They have a four story house. Like I was doing tons of flights of stairs. And now that I'm in Florida, we have no stairs at all. So this goal is definitely gonna change, but there's a step goal that you can set or the watch can set. There is a floors goal, which is flights of stairs. Once again, you can set it or the watch can set it. And there is a sleep goal. This is something that I am terrible at. I think I've gotten my sleep goal check one time since having this watch. And the goal, which I really know I need to get, is eight hours of sleep a night. So that's something I really wanna get better at. And another reason why I really wanted the Garmin watch, I wanted a watch I could sleep in and track my sleep in, and it is just incredible. But I personally love having the watch set my goals because they do change day to day. Like it's not just the same thing. And I like seeing the watch learn me. I think it's so fascinating. So that is the main difference when it comes to the goals. And I personally love it. And I know I keep mentioning sleep. So now let's get into one of my other favorite differences, which are all the incredible metrics that the Garmin watch measures. 
I think it is so incredibly fascinating and I love learning from this information. So I'm gonna open up my app and kind of talk you through some of these metrics and I'll put pictures on the screen when it applies. But obviously the watch keeps track of your heart rate, your resting heart rate, what it's at when you're working out, all the heart rates. It also has a body battery, which basically just shows how much of your body battery you have drained or how much you have charged that day. So obviously when you're doing physical activity, you're gonna be draining that body battery. And then when you're resting and when you're sleeping, you're gonna be charging that body battery. So it's basically just a cool way of showing you whether or not you need more rest or you're good to go. The watch also measures your stress level and it shows you how long you spent in like a restful stress level, a low stress level, medium and high stress levels. And then you can also compare it from like one day, seven days, four weeks, a year. Like I think it is so freaking cool. And then another thing I didn't mention for the goals, there is an intensity minutes per week. That is also a goal that I have the watch set for me. And then there are steps just like on an Apple watch. There are calories burned just like on an Apple watch. And it does show your resting calories and your active calories and then together your total calories, which I really appreciate that differentiation. And then it shows your respiration while you're awake. And then also while you're asleep, I personally love looking at my respiration when I'm asleep, like when I'm going through the different sleep stages, I just think it's so cool. Um, you can also keep track of your cycle. You do have to enter some things on your phone in order for it to do so, but I do think that's a really cool feature. Um, keeps track of your flights of stairs you have climbed, keeps track of your sleep and your sleep score. So like I was saying, it literally shows you the stages of sleep you go through, how long you spend in each stage, your respiration during those stages. Like I just think it is so fascinating. And then it also kind of gives you a score. Like it rates your sleep score based on your sleep duration, your stress while you're sleeping, your deep sleep, your light sleep, your REM sleep, and your awake slash restlessness. It gives you a score based off of all of that. And if you have a good score or a bad score, you can kind of change or not change your sleeping habits from there. And then it also shows you a snapshot of the last seven days going through basically any workout you have done. It totals up like your mileage walked, your mileage ran, your time doing workouts, your average resting heart rate for the last seven days, your average stress level for the last seven days, your daily average steps, your average flights climbed, your daily average calories burned, your daily average sleep, your daily average sleep score, and then your daily average awake respiration. So that little snapshot is really cool to see your averages because not every day is exactly the same. And then obviously you can also scroll through and see all the specifics for every single day you have this watch on your body. And I just find it so fascinating. Like I'm learning so much about myself and I'm learning that I really need to get more sleep. And I just love, I love looking at it. I think it is so freaking fun. And obviously it keeps track of every single workout as long as you turn on the workout, which like I said, there are so many workouts to choose from and it's super simple to start and stop a workout once you figure out how to do it. And I just, I'm obsessed. I clearly love this watch and I'm never going back. All right, another difference that I actually got asked about on Instagram a lot was the weight of the watch. So obviously I have my Apple watch here and then I also have my Garmin here. Just by like feel, the Garmin is so incredibly light, but I do have a food scale here. So I'm actually gonna weigh these and we're gonna do a true experiment to see what the actual weights of each are. And then remember, I do have the 40 millimeter Venu 2S and then this is the 40 millimeter Apple watch series four. So let's compare. I'm just using my Amazon basics food scale and I think I'm gonna do this in ounces. So up first, the Apple watch. You guys can't even see this. It is 2.1 ounces. I'll actually take a picture and put it on the screen because I know that you guys can't see this in the camera. And then let's switch to the Garmin watch. It is 1.4 ounces, very cool. And then I don't know if I mentioned it, but I have the natural sand and gold Garmin. Now that it's off my wrist, here's like a better look at it. It is, it is stunning. I am obsessed with this thing. And I feel like you can dress it up. It can be athletic, but it can also be nice and like classy, especially with the watch face that I chose. Like it's just brilliant. And you can obviously choose from tons of different watch faces. I just really like this one since the hands on the clock were gold. It matched the gold ring. Like 
it is just beautiful but yes the weight of the watch is also a big difference like i don't even feel this one on my wrist and maybe it's just because i'm so used to having the heavier apple watch but i truly like it doesn't bother me at all when i'm sleeping and i'm someone who can't even sleep with a hair tie on my wrist so that was really incredible to notice when i woke up the first day like truly don't even feel like it's there I'm obsessed. All right, last thing I wanna mention is the difference in the price point. And obviously you can look up these prices yourself, but this is just me comparing my Apple Watch Series 4 40 millimeter with cellular and my Garmin Venu 2S. This, like I said, I got it my senior year of college. It cost me $550. I believe that may be with Apple Care included, but since it was the cellular one, it was way more expensive. And like I said, I never even used the cellular. So it was a bit of a waste of money, but oh well, it's over. What am I gonna do about it? And this watch, I had to get the receipts from my boyfriend since it was a Christmas present. The watch itself was $299 incredible and then obviously with taxes shipping and handling it was 317 dollars total like for my gift but i would expect this watch for all that it can do to be way way more expensive than the apple watch and i know there are garmin watches that are extremely expensive i'm talking like 700 800 close to a thousand dollars maybe even more i haven't fully looked at the website but there are some bougie expensive garmin watches and i can only imagine how incredible those things are and like all that they can do if this watch is this incredible and like blows my mind every single day i can't even imagine so if you're wondering about the price point there you go all right i promise a last thing i need to mention because i actually got a very specific question about this it was whether or not the garmin comes with some type of warranty and like i mentioned my apple watch i believe i had apple care on it but garmin products actually come with like a built-in one-year warranty i bought my boyfriend's through best buy he bought mine through best buy and we actually learned this because his watch acted funny a few months into having it so i contacted best buy they told me about the one-year warranty so if we needed to get a new one we could but then i contacted garmin support about it which they were incredible so freaking knowledgeable about what they do and everything about the watch as they should be but truly a dream like sometimes support is just a hassle and a half to deal with they were a dream they knew exactly how to fix the problem sent me step-by-step -step instructions on how to get the watch back to normal and it worked perfectly so if you do get a garmin and something happens to it and you think you need a new one maybe contact support see if they can fix the problem and then if not if it's under that year mark you can get a new one because of that one year warranty so i wanted to mention that before i forgot hopefully that helps answer any questions and i need you guys to know that i am not at all hating on apple watches or people who wear apple watches I was that girl for seven years and they're still such an incredible health and fitness tracking tool but for me what i do my stage in my life and fitness journey i just feel like the garmin is a better fit it's more advanced and it teaches me so much more about myself and the battery life is just incredible also it is absolutely beautiful it's safe to say i'm obsessed i'm in love i am never going back and I hope this video helped answer any questions. If you're someone who is thinking about making the switch or sticking with Apple, sticking with Garmin, whatever it may be, I hope this video was helpful. And once again, it was just from my own personal opinion, my own personal experience. So take it all with a grain of salt. Maybe other people have different opinions, but I personally definitely prefer the Garmin. I'm in love. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down below. I will get back to you. And if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a like. Make sure you're subscribed and I will see you all next time. Bye.